Hey guys, welcome to another IndieTips.com tutorial here on Ugly McGregor. Today, we are going to look at five needed essentials that you should acquire before you start filming. Now, I think there's a safe generalization to be made about DIY and indie filmmakers, and that is that we spend so much time window gazing at the latest filmmaking equipment. Raw this, raw that, 4K, 6K, 8K, can it shoot dark underwater slow-mo? That's all everyone seems to care about. And you may have spent months, even years, acquiring your equipment and resources for your short film, yet to be slowed down because you have forgot a few cloven pegs. This list of items, they're cheap to come by and they're often overlooked. So without further ado, number one, fans. It's highly important to have fans. They retweet your tweets and they like your posters on Facebook and <coughs> hang on, wrong fans. A mechanical fan that creates airflow is what you need. This was something that we learned at a late stage of our first block of filming. With long hot days of filming inside, lots of electrical equipment and lights which were hot enough to fry an egg, they made the room very muggy. Morale, along with patience, was quick to drop. Then towards the later end of the day, we would run into the problem where the camera was working overtime to keep itself cooled. Therefore, the sound of the internal fan was making a much louder noise than usual causing our sound guy to look at me with an evil look. You can pick up a fan for next to nothing and I'm sure a lot of you already have a few lying around either in your basement or attic. As soon as you or the director yells cut, switch the fans on, cool the set down, cool the equipment down, and you will keep people happy to some extent. Number two, as mentioned in the intro, clove pegs. Pegs were vital for attaching color gels to our lights. In the real world of onset practices, pegs are often called CP47, C47, 47, peg, ammo, bullet, for some reason, all unknown to myself. However, we ran into two problems regarding cloven pegs. The first being that the secondary lights were using different band doors to our primary lights. So our pegs couldn't actually fasten correctly. So the tape we had for blocking, we ended up using it to attach the gels to the lights as it was the only tape that we had that was sort of heat resistant. The second reason, which is also some advice, is to buy more pegs than you already have there is no doubt that you will encounter the peg thief. He comes up while you swap the gels or take a break. You put the peg down for one second and next, it's gone. Number three, gaffer tape, salad tape, double-sided tape, marking tape, electrical tape, blocking tape. There's going to be a need and use for each and every one of these. Whether it's marking out your actors blocking, taping down possible trip hazards, or covering up something that physically cannot be removed like a light sensor. At one location, we had already used all of our lights. We had two 800 watts light in the deep space in the background, and the 300 watt was coming in and hitting the actress as a backlight. The actress was facing the window, so her front was fully illuminated with natural daylight. However, we just needed that extra bit of full light to provide some facial contrast. We had an LED light, but all of the light stands were being used. So with some gaffer tape, we stuck it to a mic stand. Number four, tape measure. As you progress further down the ladder of film crews from pro to DIY, the list of jobs and responsibilities start to merge into a single person. More often than not, on a DIY shoot, the director is also the cinematographer. The tape measure never left my pocket and it helped speed up the shoot. Prior to the production, myself and the camera assistant worked out the correlation of the distance from the lens to the subject in regards of achieving a certain shot. Our primary lens was 50mm and from our test shots we knew that we had to be at least 8 feet away from the subject to achieve a mid shot or 4 foot away to obtain a close up. When it came to the day of the shoot we had our storyboards and the shot list ready to aid us but we didn't have to fast around with getting the camera into the correct position. We knew that shot 1E was an extreme close up and needed to be placed 2 foot away from the subject at the corresponding angle from the storyboard of course, it sped up the technical aspect of the production tremendously. And finally, a blade. Throughout the entire production, my trusty Stanley blade never left my right pocket. If you're a hands-on filmmaker, you're going to need it for a lot more than just cutting tape. For one example out of dozens, you may have had a household light that you want to include in the scene, but the light temperature is thrown off your colour balance and you don't have the correct bulb. But you do have the correct gel. A quick cut and size down of the gel and you're good to go. They are five needed essentials that I guarantee you as a DIY filmmaker, you're going to need when it comes to filming. For bonus, I will mention that having a highlighter at hand is also very helpful. If you have any more ideas, comment below for everyone else to see. And until next time, see you soon.